As our communities grow, we need more roads, parking lots, and sidewalks. We also need roofs over our heads to protect us from the weather. When the rain falls on these surfaces, it runs off instead of soaking into the ground. When the rains are heavy, the natural creeks and streams in the area become swollen with fast running water, causing problems like erosion of banks. Also, plants and animals that live in the water can be suffocated because of the sediment and pollutants contained in the runoff. As our numbers grow, our normal everyday activities like fertilizing the lawn, washing the car, or even walking the dog can harm our streams, rivers, bays, and oceans. Heavy rains cause excess fertilizer, lawn chemicals, automotive byproducts, pet waste, and leaves to wash untreated into our waterways. You may have noticed ponds and low areas around new roadways and development projects. You may even have one in your neighborhood. Did you know that these natural looking areas are our first defense against water pollution? Engineers call them best management practices or simply BMPs and they're designed to catch the large volumes of water that run off of our roofs, streets, and parking lots during storms. Instead of running directly into our waterways, the stormwater runs into these BMPs where it can slow down and be filtered and some of it is absorbed by the plants and the soil. To ensure that BMPs work properly, they must be maintained. This video will show you the various types of BMPs and what must be done to keep them operating properly. Detention basins, sometimes called dry ponds, hold stormwater for a specified period of time. While the water is detained, many of the pollutants, such as fertilizers, attach to sediment particles and settle to the bottom. The clean water is then released through an outlet. Retention basins, also called wet ponds or stormwater ponds, have a permanent pool of water. They work much the same way as the detention basins, but are more effective at improving the water quality because the stormwater stays in the pond for a much longer period of time. More of the pollution-laden sediment has a chance to settle out and a permanent population of aquatic plants and microbes absorb and filter the water. Grass swales are gently sloped grassy areas that slow down the flow of stormwater runoff. Slowing down the water will give the sediment a chance to settle as well as give time for some of the water to naturally absorb into the ground. Filter strips are like grass swales, only wider. Buffer areas are large filter strips that contain trees and shrubs. Buffer areas provide vegetation that will slow the runoff. The plants also work to absorb the water and filter out the pollutants. These stormwater treatment devices only work properly if they are maintained. Some maintenance activities, like mowing and removing trash, are obvious, but maintenance needs vary with each site, and unless you're a professional, you may not identify potential problems. Your local Department of Public Works or Department of Transportation Residency Office can tell you how a particular stormwater treatment device should be cared for. Local residents may be able to safely do much of the work, but most operations involve special knowledge or equipment and are best left to professionals. It's recommended that a facility be professionally inspected once a year. It's also recommended that a fund be established to take care of long-term maintenance costs. At a minimum, an inspector should check to make sure that all structures designed to contain, remove, or channel stormwater are in good operating condition free of debris, and have not been eroded or undermined by burrowing animals. Grass and other vegetation slow runoff, prevent erosion, filter sediment, and absorb harmful nutrients. It is important to keep the area mowed and maintained, but not overly so. Grass is hardiest and most effective if mowed no shorter than 6 to 8 inches. Wetland plants are also very important and should be checked for damage and to make sure they're not laden with silt. Debris and litter should be removed regularly to maintain the appearance of the facility 
and prevent clogged outlet structures, damaged plants, mosquito breeding, and excessive surface algae. Depending on the design, stormwater management facilities may have valves, gates, pumps, fences, locks, access hatches, or other mechanical components. To function properly when needed, they should be maintained. Check with your local Public Works Department or Department of Transportation Residency Office for guidance. Mosquitoes can be a concern whenever water is concentrated in a natural environment. The best way to control mosquitoes is to prevent the formation of temporary pools of stagnant water. Mosquitoes are seldom a problem in permanent bodies of water, such as retention basins or wet ponds, because these places are also a good habitat for small fish and other insects that feed on the mosquito larva. Mosquitoes are much more of a problem in poorly maintained detention basins that hold shallow pools of stagnant water for a few days to a couple of weeks. Trash like bottles, cups, tires, and other containers are also prime mosquito breeding habitat and should be promptly removed. Animals like muskrats, groundhogs, and nutria should be eliminated and their burrows filled as soon as possible. The burrows of these animals are as much as six inches in diameter and deteriorate the structural integrity of embankments and dams. In general, retention ponds should appear healthy and natural with relatively clear water. Excessive algae growth or soupy green water usually indicates over-fertilization problems upstream and excessive nutrients in the water. Of course, a more conservative use of fertilizer will help, but more plantings of desirable aquatic and semi-aquatic vegetation in and around the pond will absorb more of the nutrients and discourage the growth of algae and other nuisance vegetation. It is very important to prevent erosion of the banks and bottom of dry ponds and the visible banks of wet ponds. The easiest way to do this is by keeping the ground cover healthy. Any bare areas should be reseeded and stabilized immediately. Large woody plants like young trees and shrubs should be kept off embankments. Again, consistent maintenance of grassy embankments by mowing at 6 to 8 inches will control stray seedlings. Larger trees and shrubs away from the embankment are fine and can add to the beauty and health of the system. However, for ease of maintenance, they are best planted where they can grow in a natural, maintenance-free state, away from areas that need to be mowed. Sediment removal is the most expensive aspect of maintenance. If your facility needs to be dredged, an on-site area to put the soil is best. If a disposal area has not been set aside, transportation, landfill, and other fees will greatly increase the cost. Dredging allows the pond to once again hold the proper amount of water. It also removes the highly enriched layer of material from the bottom, preventing it from being stirred up and released during the next storm event. For planning purposes, sediment removal should be considered every two to 10 years for dry ponds and five to 10 years for wet ponds. Once the dredging is done, any disturbed areas will need to be stabilized and replanted or the facility will quickly clog and need dredging again. Before tackling any significant maintenance project, it would be advisable to contact your local Department of Public Works, Department of Engineering, or VDOT's residency office. Some things like mowing and litter removal are best done by residents or a community group, but routine professional inspections are usually worthwhile because problems can be detected while they are cost-effective to fix. If professional help is needed for bigger problems, be sure to contract with a reputable firm and ask for references and sites you can check. Stormwater pollution reduction facilities substantially reduce the impact that our modern transportation system has on the environment. They can be functional and beautiful at the same time if properly maintained. Please contact your local Public Works Department or VDOT Residency Office if you have any concerns or questions.